Oh my goodness, we are back. What I thought was a final video on the Kodama Obsidian was in fact not a final video. Michael reached out from Kodama after the last video and asked me to, to please give it another shot because it could have been something done wrong to it when he was here. It could have been just something. I didn't have the time to really troubleshoot. I didn't have the time to put together a tuned profile. So he enlisted the help of John, a local person here in the Seattle area and someone who uh, is active in the Kodama community. He has himself a Trinus. He knows how to work on the Obsidian. So big thanks to John for getting this working. So here's what happened. Gave John the Obsidian. He remounted the fan shroud. He put a new Bowden tube on because he said this Bowden tube had a bunch of filament dust in it and didn't seem right. So we have a new one, a white one, a hopefully cleaner one, something that seems to be working a little bit better. And then finally, and this is the most important part, John gave me a tuned Simplify 3D profile. So new Bowden tube, a remounted fan shroud, and a tuned Simplify 3D profile, and all of a sudden I have all of this before me. So it looks like my final video was not my final video, and we have a lot to talk about. So when I gave this machine to John, John had this roll of the Kodama Blue PLA on there, and he didn't want to use it all up knowing that that's what I had had, so he printed the faceless model in his own gray PLA, and this was the first one. It turned out decent. This was, I believe, the second one. Either way, these uh, are great. He had no failures once he used his tuned Simplify 3D profile. This little legsy guy that you see right here. The reason this isn't complete is because John stopped the print. He wanted to verify that his tuned profile in the new Bowden tube and the remounted fan shroud worked with the filament that I was using, and it was working. It looks great. So he stopped the print. He actually taped it to the print bed and then he brought it back to me. So that was good. So now with this machine, I had some proven models right here that told me this machine was ready to go. What's the first thing I did? I loaded up Simplify 3D and I printed myself a Benchy. You remember before in the previous video, I showed you the Benchy that Michael printed and it was stringy and icky. This one is not stringy, it is not icky. It's printed in the Kodama blue, and other than a slicing area where the little flagpole goes in, it turned out great. It is missing the bottom, and you might be thinking, oh no, what happened? Well, when John brought the machine back to me, he had put a piece of tape over where the filament kind of came out of the roll to keep it sturdy because it was on the spool holder right here. I forgot about that and I didn't see it and so it yanked the spool up into the extruder motor and was clicking away. I luckily was able to get to it, remove the tape and let it complete and so the bottom part of this Benchy is somewhere in the kitchen while the top part is glorious and it's what you're looking at right here. And just to prove that the bottom layer does come out, here it is. This is the bottom layer of a 3D Benchy printed on the Obsidian using the Kodama Blue PLA. It looks great. Next up on the Obsidian is this My Little Pony-esque unicorn alicorn creature. This is modeled by 3D printed Aspie, and the link will be down in the description. Uh, it's a great model. It printed with three shells, no infill, uh, four top layers, three bottom layers, 0.2 millimeter layer height. There is a little layer inconsistency here right across the left eyeball. Ouch. But uh, other than that, the model is perfect. This is a good model. If you guys get the chance to print this, I highly recommend you do, just to show off how cool your printer is. And this printer, when printing this model, it's pretty cool. A test print on our printer wouldn't be complete for me without printing Devin from Make Anything's wonderful vase. And this is printed in the Kodama Blue PLA. Spiral vase mode and Simplify 3D. Three bottom layers, 0.2 millimeters on the layers, and it's glorious. I love this model. This is a fantastic model. And I know vase mode to show off vases is pretty, well, it makes sense, but this, this there's something about this vase. I do love it. Devin did a great job designing this. And in vase mode, it looks perfect. This turned out extremely well. 
If anybody is a Doctor Who fan, you know what this is. This is a weeping angel, and uh, Josh, what? The image of an angel becomes an angel itself, right? Yeah, so you're all gonna die, don't blink. Don't blink, see what I can do. So this is 0.2 millimeter layers, three bottom layers, four top, 10% uh, infill, uh, printed with the Kodama Blue PLA and it printed really well. It was printed at, I believe, 45 millimeters per second. The hands look okay, but the rest of the model is fantastic. If you look at the back, the wings on this Weeping Angel are incredible, and the consistency of the layers on the wings, and I didn't blink, I just moved! <sighs> we're all dead, I'm sorry. Right, we're not dead, we're all back in time now. Yeah. We're all back in time. The Obsidian did a wonderful job with this angel. The, the little fingers on the Weeping Angel are almost just little tiny drops of filament, and it still was able to print those no problem. I say they look okay, but any printer that prints those small details okay is doing a fantastic job. There is one part that you're not seeing. There is a built-in support between the chin and the bottom of the neck, and I took that off. It, it comes pre-built into the model. If you do get a chance, though, you should print this model, and you, you shouldn't blink. Next on the Obsidian, I did want to try something a little bit different, and this is an M5 nut, and it's got threads. This was printed at point two millimeters with the Kodama Blue PLA, and it works. This I tried this on uh, an M5 screw that was on uh, one of my printers upstairs, actually, the BCN Sigma R17, the little filament buckets. It has an M5 thread that you can put an M5 nut onto, and this worked. It went on to the threads, no problem. So the Obsidian is able to print small details, at least in this example, really well. Finally, I wanted to see what the tolerance ability was of this machine. So using the tuned profile in Simplify 3D that I got from John, I decided to throw the Maker's Muse tolerance test at it. So the middle one is 0.5. That seems to work okay. Next up is 0.4, and that seems to be okay. 0.3 stuck a little bit, but then I got it to move. 0.2 is stuck, and so is 0.15 and 0.1. So this printer with, it's a tuned profile to print something nice, but it's not specifically tuned for that specific filament, and I'm willing to bet you could probably get this printer to get 0.2 free on the tolerance test. Uh, but, but for what I have and what I threw at it, it did a fantastic job, and it being able to do the 0.3 tolerance test just like that, it just took a little bit to free it up. That's pretty good. Thanks for the model, Angus. I'll definitely put a link in the description where others can download this and give it a try themselves. There are a few things that I would love to see changed about this printer. One of the things is the build plate is only accessible from the back. It is built to be removable, but you have to remove it from the back of the machine. Both Angus and Joe pointed this out and they make a really good point there. And so I agree with them. For the build plate to be removed, it probably should be made accessible from the front of the machine if possible. Angus did make mention that the Kodama logo right here should light up and well, I'm a fan of that idea. Michael, Kodama, if you guys can light that up, I highly suggest you give it a try. I did find that the extruder is a little loose back here, and I know that in the final version that ships, that probably won't be the case, but it is a prototype unit. It is a little loose. It hasn't caused any functional instability, but it's loose. When using the touch screen, there were times when it would freeze up or completely reboot. And I know that they're still working on the firmware for the machine, and again, this is a prototype, but I wanna make sure I get it out there that I did have occasions where the touch screen would freeze or the machine would reboot. It didn't stop me from being able to print something, but it did provide a level of annoyance that I was not comfortable with. I did find out that this switch back here turns the lights off and on. Cool. 
To level the bed, you are still required to turn knobs in four of the corners. I, I would like to see more an Ultimaker style where it has the one screw in the back and the two in the front corners. I think that might be a little bit easier to adjust. The bed is very small, so I don't know if automatic bed leveling would be required, but I think that in a case like a printer like this, if you can add it on for really cheap, it might be worth it to improve the overall experience and to make the machine be closer to the kitchen gadget that it's trying to be. Setting the Z height is in the back of the machine and it is still a little bit hard to get to and it's a little bit uh, cumbersome to adjust and, and tune, but once you lock it into place and actually tighten the screw that keeps it there, it does typically stay. This is the $149 version. This is not the $99 version. The $99 version is missing this front panel. I did not test this using tethered printing. And because I didn't have the $249 version, I could not test the camera, the app, or the heated build plate. So I don't know how the camera is gonna work. I don't have any experience with the app and I don't know how the heated bed is gonna connect. I'm kind of excited to see how they do that. And finally, the spool holder on the side of the machine, I firmly believe needs to change. Right now, it doesn't fit a standard size spool. Uh, Calvin, my buddy CW Crawlers, make it with Calvin. He uh, made and welded this filament holder for me. It's awesome. And it's great that I had that because I wouldn't be able to take this off and put it on the machine. It just doesn't hold it. So now I can do this. It does take the Kodama spools just fine. But if this machine is going to be on the market and people are going to want to buy their own filament for the machine, there should probably either be a way for the machine to hold on to larger spools that aren't necessarily the Kodama spools, or maybe Kodama can put out some sort of 3D model for an approved spool holder for the machine. Maybe there's a way that Kodama could design a spool holder for this machine that a user of the machine could print out on the machine and then use themselves. I think that's a really good idea. And if it's possible, I think that's something they should implement. I was able to try other filaments. So this is PLA. This is an APLA from 3D Fuel and you can see it's printing one of these, but in red. I did try flexible filaments, but I couldn't get them through the Bowden extruder very well. I tried uh, Cheetah from Ninja Tech. I thought that would be one that might make it through, but it did not work out. You might be able to get other uh, slightly harder flexible filaments through the Bowden extruder, but I didn't have any luck, so I can't give you any advice there. So now where do we stand with this machine and the now post final video that you're watching right now? I think we stand in a really good spot. In the previous video, I talked about this machine saying I wouldn't buy it because I was getting failures too consistently. However, now with a tuned profile, a new Bowden tube and a remounted fan shroud, I didn't get any failures from the machine. I did get a failure of my own from the filament being taped, but that's just because I didn't open my eyeballs and see it. I did have a non-perfect first layer on the Maker's Muse tolerance test, but it didn't cause the print to fail. The part of the model that was messed up the most on the first layer is the center tolerance test, and it does work. And so I am not counting that as a failure. I'm just counting that as a partial first layer that looks like butt. I think that everything that I was worried about uh, about this machine previously is taken care of by the three things that I've mentioned. And I think that there's still time to get in on a good deal on the Kickstarter for this machine. If, if this gets improved upon and then that's shipped to backers, backers are going to be very happy with this machine. It is up to Kodama to take the advice of myself, Angus from Maker's Muse, and Joe, 3D Maker Noob, to, to improve upon the design and take anything that we said and, and, and maybe use it for, better, for bettering the machine. I think that they're on the right track. And I think that this machine is valuable to the community because it's so low priced and it's, well, it prints incredibly well. All right, and with that, I'm gonna call my Obsidian video series final until a production unit is released, once it's shipped to backers, and then I can, uh, I can get my hands on that and really put it to the test. That's what I'm looking forward to. A big thanks to Michael from Kodama for, you know, stopping by to visit. 
for having some faith in my review process, for getting me in touch with John, and for now letting me have one final chance at showing off what the Obsidian can do. I wasn't compensated in any way for this video, and this printer is not mine to keep. These are just my opinions, and they're, for you. they're there for you if you want to listen to them. Well, with that, let's call it good. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Don't forget to ring that bell. A big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon, uh, everybody that lets the ads play, and everybody that's subscribed via YouTube Red. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, don't blink. And high five. Whoosh. Next, I wanted to do something a little bit different. This is an M. <laughs> Keep that in. Ah, oh, uh, dang it. Next up on this. We should keep that. Sean, Keep don't that. you, you, that's an end blooper if it's anything.